Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Robert Latham and the doctrine of the word within his systematic theology. We're going to take a look at pages 242 to 252. This uh, book within the book runs from 185 to 285. Let's go to block one and take a look at the interpretation of scripture in the first century. The Old Testament foreshadows the coming of Christ. The Old Testament is directed toward Christ. Christ is the key to the relationship between the two testaments. Luke 24, 27. Beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them things about himself in the scriptures. We must distinguish between doctrine and interpretation. Many different interpretations have emerged over the years. But Latham says interpretation should be eschatological. The Old Testament is fulfilled in Christ. 1 Peter 1, 10 and 12. The prophets prophesied about the New Testament times. Romans 15, 4. The Old Testament was written for our benefit. And Galatians 5, 8. The gospel was disclosed in advance to Abraham. Therefore, the Old Testament has an eschatological outlook, a forward future orientation. But uh, fundamentally, in the first century, interpretation becomes typology. The New Testament uses a typology type interpretation of the Old Testament. This method dominates the first century. The Old Testament equals promise and the New Testament equals fulfillment. Christ is foreshadowed in the Old Testament. Christ is the organic center of all scripture. And Latham reminds us there is a perichoritic relationship between revelation, scripture, and proclamation. They mutually indwell each other. So what we want to take away from block one is fundamentally note three, block one, note three. Interpretation in the first century was typology because Christ is foreshadowed in the Old Testament. There are many examples of uh, a type in the Old Testament as a type of Christ because Christ is the organic center of all scripture. Now block two, we take a look at proclamation, hearing, and interpretation. So under proclamation, proclamation is the heart of the church's life. And within this context of preaching, saving doctrine goes forth. People are brought to salvation through preaching and through the sacraments. However, the word always takes priority. And Latham leads us to Romans 10:14. How are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? How are they to hear Christ without someone to proclaim Christ? So it's all about hearing Christ in the word preached. Christ is heard in the preaching of the gospel. Christ is himself present in the preaching of the gospel. The preacher is one who is sent. He is a servant of the word. Now Ephesians 2.17 is an interesting verse because it says that in the preaching in Ephesus it was Christ himself who preached peace. So there's a declaration of the presence of Christ in preaching. And then if we go to the Gospel of Luke, Luke 10.16 the one who hears you hears me. In John 5.25, the dead will hear the voice of the Son. Those who are spiritually dead will hear the voice of the Son in the proclamation of the Word. In the proclamation of the Word, Christ himself will be heard through proclamation. Now, proclamation and hearing equals Christ speaking through the interpretation. A full sense of scripture is found by searching out other places in scripture, in scripture's overall teaching. 
Scripture is the authoritative source over its own interpretation. There is a unity in Scripture. It possesses a common theme. Its truth is one truth. And sense is to be deducted and deduced from the text itself. So whenever possible, we are to interpret Scripture by going to other Scripture text and allow Scripture to interpret itself. That's always our first hermeneutic principle. That is always the first hermeneutic principle. Allow Scripture, first of all, the opportunity to interpret itself. Now, Latham closes out this lesson with uh, Block 3, Literal, Non-Literal, and Symbolic Interpretation. Word and Spirit. The Spirit authored Scripture. The Spirit employed the Word to effect salvation. Then, saving faith is produced by the Spirit. We have faith in Christ because it's a gift of the Holy Spirit who creates that faith in us. It is always a being born from above. Always. We do not practice faith on our own. It is always a gift from above. Now, Justin Martyr, the New Testament fills the Old Testament. The Old Testament references Christ. Christ fulfills the law and the prophets. Christ embodies the Yahweh covenant in himself, conveyed within the unity of the scriptures. And that is a fundamental axiom. Christ embodies the Yahweh covenant in himself because he is the hypostatic union of humanity with deity. And that is the ultimate Yahweh covenant, the unity of humanity with deity being lifted into unity with the triune Godhead through the hypostatic union in Jesus Christ. So I agree with that axiom. Christ embodies the Yahweh covenant in himself. Now, origin, the threefold interpretive method. We find it by fulfilling the rule established by Solomon in Proverbs. And he uses Proverbs 22 as an example. He employs the triad, body, soul, and spirit. So we have literal interpretation represented by the body, non-literal by the interpretive work of the soul, and symbolic interpretation as entering the interpretive realm of spirit. Literal, non-literal, and symbolic body, soul, and spirit type of interpretation. So fundamentally, in this lesson, in these 10 pages, 242 to 252, we learn first of all in block one that interpretation in the first century was um, a method of typology. The Old Testament scriptures prophesied of Christ. They eschatologically were oriented toward the Messiah. Therefore, Old Testament types foreshadowed Christ. And then in block two, it's all about proclamation and hearing, block two, note three, as Christ himself speaking through interpretation. Christ himself is present in the proclamation of the word. And we have scripture reference for that. And I think Ephesians 2.17 is the best where it says that the preaching in Ephesus was Christ himself who preached. I reign a peace. And then Luke 10, the one who hears you hears me. We have the promise that in the proclamation of the word, Christ himself is present with us. And then in block three, we would have to, I think, uh, conclude with uh, origin and the uh, threefold methodology of interpretation. Sometimes it is literal, 
but there are times when it is non-literal. And there's a uh, interpretive method used. And there is, at times, there is the symbolic. When uh, you have things like a book of signs in the book of Revelation, sometimes it is a book of signs. So there are different methodologies of interpretation that are necessary. So I think origin is correct. Sometimes literal, sometimes non-literal, sometimes symbolic. And Revelation is an example of a book of signs, symbolic. But this gives us great additional content on the doctrine of the word that will wrap up pages 242 to 252. And our next lesson will just be 10 pages, so the next reading assignment will be 252 to 262, and uh, eventually we will conclude at 285. The uh, book inside the book runs from 185 to 285 on the Doctrine of the Word. So we will pick up next time on page 253.